Hello everyone. Welcome back to Football Unplugged with me Satvik. In today's episode we are going to talk about pressing in football, one of the most commonly used tactic in the sport and uh, something that we are going to go into the finer details of. In layman's language, pressing is just a uh, the defending team's way of regaining possession and preventing the attacking team going forward and creating goal scoring opportunities pressing as a tactic has been in the sport forever right uh, we've seen those crazy videos of the dutch national team uh, you know going crazy and pressing with the entire team and also uh, origo saki's ac milan you know uh, pressing the team very aggressively you know that is something that is definitely cannot be done in the modern day football your lack of physicality or you know preventing attackers is one of the major criteria of the referees as well but yeah so pressing has been uh, in the game as a tactic that is being used uh, for more than 4 to 5 decades easily right uh, so in today's episode we are going to understand what are the different types of pressing and you know what are the major triggers and traps that involve that is involved in pressing and at the same time we are going to you know take examples of team that follow a particular style of pressing uh so we can categorize pressing into three major categories one is a high press where uh, the op- the defending team usually presses uh, up top uh, as close to the opposition d as possible uh, the second is the mid block wherein the defending team usually lines up in the midfield um allows the opposition to probably play from the back and come to the midfield and then the opposition uh, then the defending team tends to press right. and lastly uh, we're going to also be discussing about the low block wherein uh, the defensive line is very deep uh, they are as close to the d as their own d as possible and they create very compact spaces and create very tight spaces for uh, not letting the opposition pass through them the low block is also famously called park the bus by a lot of people and is deployed by you know one that was famously used by jose mourinho a lot of times when he was managing real madrid under barcelona uh when he was managing real madrid against barcelona as well so these are majorly majorly how uh, presses are categorized before moving forward before this analyzing each type of press we are going to understand uh two special terms or two terms that are very familiar and very important uh for a pressing move or for a for the tactic of pressing to be very successful uh the two terms are triggers and traps so talking about a trigger a trigger is basically a sign for the defending team uh to instigate or to initiate a press right so it's basically uh, a sign for the opposition team to start pressing right uh, so uh, triggers can be of various types right uh, the first one uh, being an misplaced pass by the attacking team right so as soon as the defending t- attacking team has missed uh, placed a misplaced pass uh, the opposition can directly start pressing and create a very difficult situation for the uh, attacking team to then regain the possession as well right another trigger could be uh, the the man in the possession uh, not facing the attacking goal right uh, the player in possession could be facing his own goal and hence he'd have less idea of players trying to come and press him and probably hence that is an indication for the defending team to come and press again another trigger could be a difficult trap or a difficult control uh, if a player has received a very pacey pass from one of his teammates and uh, the expectation the expectation is that the first touch might not be very good this is another trigger for the defending team to come and start pressing as well lastly uh, the uh, defending team might also have identified a certain players uh, in the opposition that they feel are probably not as good as on the ball as some of the other players so as soon as the player with uh, who's not the best uh, with the ball at his feet has the ball uh, this is a sign for the defending team to come and start pressing the opposition as well so this is basically what a trigger is and we we've discussed what are the different types of triggers and again simply put triggers are basically sign for the defending team to come and start pressing traps 
on the other hand are situations that are sort of forced by the defending team on the opposition to create a situation that is favorable for them to start pressing right again let's say for example uh, one of the full backs uh, of the team is not very good on the ball what they'll tend to do is they they will leave the full back with, with no man on him and they still start pressing the other player than the player on the ball what that would force them to do is give the ball to the player who's probably not the best with the ball right thus as soon as the ball with who's not very good at his feet gets the ball it is again a trigger for these people to then uh, instigate a press another trap uh, for pressing uh, could be a uh, forcing the opposition on the touch line wherein the sideline acts as another defender where the, the opposition cannot move uh, the team would shift the opposition to one side of the pitch and hence start pressing as soon as the ball comes to the player uh, who's near the touch line so understanding triggers and traps are very essential for us to understand how pressing usually takes now we're going to discuss how what are the different types of presses and how does pressing in all of these uh, different types of pressing takes place first of all we are going to discuss the high press the high press is something that is used by some of the famous teams currently uh, jurgen klopp's liverpool pep guardiola's uh, manchester city or uh, the former bayern munich manager julian nagelsmann also uh, did high press brilliantly uh, with bayern munich as well even though all of these teams uh do high press the way they press is very different so taking jurgen klopp for example uh jurgen klopp does something called as gegen pressing in the footballing world gegen pressing is simply but uh as soon as let's say if if the ball is with liverpool as soon as they lay, uh, they lose possession uh, liverpool tend to press the opposition immediately right they do not you know probably go back and uh, go back into defense uh, into their defensive shape but as soon as they lose the ball they start pressing the opposition immediately uh, the simple idea of gegen pressing is as soon as the opposition steals the ball or regains possession they are the most vulnerable and at that moment they are not in the most ideal shape that they would necessarily want to be in right and that is where a lot of times liverpool won possession uh, with the opposition in their own half and then uh, you know with sadio mane mohammed salah being extremely fast and extremely smart uh, they would uh, directly move that counter uh, pressing into a counter attack and hence a lot of goals for liverpool would come from them initially pressing the opposition stealing the ball and then creating goal scoring opportunities now with jurgen klopp's liverpool not only the attackers but also the full backs play a very important role what would usually happen is let's say mohammed salah and sadio mane would place themselves between the two uh, between the center back and the full back and roberto firmino would be there in the middle and trent alexander arnold and andrew robertson would also go up and try to avoid or try to stop the opposition from playing pass out wide what this would make uh, that what this would lead to is the goalkeeper or the you know attacking team to play the ball through the middle and this is where jurgen uh, klopp's gegen pressing was at its best where jordan henderson fabinho would be very quick to anticipate the pass cut passing options steal the ball from the opposition and then initiate a counter attack immediately so this is why uh, you know jurgen klopp's gegen pressing is not just a great defensive tool but is also a great for winning the ball immediately and then counter pressing you know we've seen this video of andrew robertson just going crazy with pressing from one side to the other and that is the sort of you know pressing that jurgen klopp klopp requires from his team moving from one premier league champion to another in manchester city uh with pep guardiola with pep guardiola being their manager uh pep guardiola would usually use a different tactic uh they would not press as aggressively let's say as a liverpool and even when they would probably lose lose possession uh what they would do is they would try to regain the possession as soon as possible but would then probably pass the ball back regain their shape and then start building the attack from then 
So unlike Liverpool, who would probably steal the ball up high and immediately start the attack, Manchester City, on the other hand, would usually take the ball upfield, uh, usually usually steal the ball up, get back into their shape, and then start building play again, and you know play around their intricate passers of Kevin De Bruyne or a uh, Bernardo Silva, right? And uh, Jo Pep Guardiola has this uh, rule or has this uh, there's this uh, rumor or a tactic that Pep Guardiola uses uses for his team is the six second rule, wherein as soon as Manchester City loses the ball, they have to regain possession within six seconds, and that is how Pep Guardiola ideally likes to press. So both Manchester City and Liverpool are more of let's say zonal uh, pressing. Uh, Julian Nagelsmann, on the other hand, for Bayern Munich, usually use the man-to-man press when it comes to pressing, right? So what they would do is they would have Robert Lewandowski up top and uh, Serge Gnabry and Leroy Sané on one of the flanks, and Thomas Müller, who was, who has some excellent space awareness, would usually control uh, the space behind Robert Lewandowski, right? They would be man on man, and hence. Uh, try to push the uh, opposition attacking team to one side and as soon as uh, they push the opposition to one side then because of them being man on man they would press the ball immediately and then try to regain the ball in one of the flanks so unlike let's say liverpool or a manchester city uh, bayern munich under julian nagelsmann used to uh, press with man to man as a tactic so this was uh, the high press uh, uh and one of the most used tactic uh used by some of the biggest clubs in the world when it comes to pressing on the other hand uh coming to uh the second type of pressing that usually takes place in football is the mid press what would happen in a mid press is or a mid block is uh the op- uh, the defending team would not press from the opposition day or to the opposition day they would invite uh the attacking team to come to the midfield and then narrow down the space and then start pressing them what this would lead to is uh, them trying to then have them having to play long balls and them probably misplacing a bunch of passes in the middle because of them narrowing it down and then starting to press one of the best examples of the mid press used by teams are uh, atletico madrid under diego simeone where uh, they would play a formation of 4-4-2 and they would start the press from the middle right uh, wherein the two strikers which in a lot of cases were diego costa and antoine griezmann uh, would start the press from uh, from the uh, from the half line and uh, thus uh, leaving and thus probably forcing the opposition teams a lot of times to launch long balls them launching long balls would make it comparatively easier for the tall center backs of diego godin uh, Uh, Jimenez uh, to easily you know head the ball away and then regain possession. Uh, so Atletico Madrid under Diego Simeone is one of the best examples of a team using a mid block press. Finally, uh, coming to the low block or in a lot of case park the bus is when the defensive line of the defending team is uh, is very low, is as close to their own uh, D as possible. um one of the pioneers uh, you know a lot of times jose mourinho also gets uh, you know credited for you know being too defensive or playing park the bus a lot of times but i think uh, one of the best managers who who plays the low block brilliantly is sean dyche right uh, we can see how defensively everton are now becoming very defensively strong but uh, we saw the best of it with his time in burnley where they would be very narrow and very deep and burnley as a team was very difficult to break down you know they had james tarkowski they had uh, uh, nick pope at the goal as well were brilliant defenders as well and uh, they would you know lie very deep they would be very narrow and hence forcing the opposition uh, to play long balls and again you know a defender like james tarkowski or uh, michael keen for that matter were very brilliant uh, when it comes to heading balls and clearing balls as well uh so yeah this these were the different types of presses uh wherein we discussed the high press used by liverpool manchester city and bayern munich where we analyzed the middle press um 
used by Diego Simeone under uh, with Atletico Madrid. And lastly, a low press or park the bus a lot of times as we call, uh, used by Sean Deitch and Jose Mourinho a lot of times, uh, wherein the team would lie very deep, be very, you know, uh, narrow uh, and creating a solid defensive team. So a lot of times Sean Deitch's defensive record or Jose Mourinho's defensive record were one of the best in the league. This is it. Uh, this is our episode on us understanding what pressing is in football and probably taking a deeper dive and analyzing how different uh, pressing techniques take place. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to know your suggestions on any other videos that I can do. Thank you so much and please subscribe to the channel. I'd love to get your support as whenever possible.